you know? <clears throat> so... Yeah, let's hear it. You want to share I've it with us? Learned, I've learned 59, oh, 51 out of 100. And uh, it means I have B1 level, B2 level in English. Very good. Yes. So I've got Cambridge certificate in English. Congratulations, Pavel. Thank you. This is great news. Yes. So you have a Cambridge certificate and you're still here. Mm. I'm enjoying your lessons. This is good. <laughs> yes. Actually, I'm, I admire uh, our conversations and so on, socializing. So very good. That's very nice to hear. I appreciate you saying that. Congratulations! Uh, if you're happy with your result, yeah, it's good to hear. Yes, but it's not so good as uh, I expected. But I have all my life in the future, and I can improve. Yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. There is always room for improvement and everything. It's always do. hard when you take the examination for the first time, and it's always like a gives you uh, more satisfaction when you uh, after having like taking exam you will find out your real result always good so you can see yes, your yes. Uh, <coughs> yeah, the um, I can see my weakest points and so on you know and I know um, I know the way I can improve myself mm -hmm. so it's great very good. That's really good news. I'm really happy for you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it's time to celebrate. I'm sure you can't wait for the weekend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, uh, on Friday, I've <clears throat> I will receive my diploma mm -hmm. from college, so I can, um, I don't know, <coughs> join to two events in one day. I can celebrate two, two events in one day. Yeah, definitely. You can do two things at once. Mm. Uh, so you said that you are going to graduate from college, yeah? <coughs> I've already graduated. Oh, I didn't understand what diploma you're talking about. Mm. Uh, bachelor degree uh, in management. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, okay. So if I understood, you are going to graduate from university. I have already graduated. Okay. Uh, last year, actually. Before, just before the new year. Mm -hmm. Ah, and, uh, you are going to take your diploma now. Yes, like receive a document. Mm -hmm. yeah. The physical diploma itself, yeah. Yes, yes. Oh. I see. Very nice. Okay, that's great. Okay, let's welcome the other students. Hello, everyone. Hello, Lydia, Stas, and Irina, and Anna. Hello. We have some new students. Hello. How are you, ladies? Fine, thank you. Welcome. Okay, so uh, we have some new students. So let's uh, let's hear something from our new students. So Irina, I believe this is the first time you are in my class, right? Yes, it's the first time. Good. So tell us something about yourself. Where are you from? Uh, what do you do? And uh, what are your hobbies? Uh, I'm from Ukraine, uh, a city Lviv. Uh, and uh, I'm going uh, to uh, pass IELTS also, mm -hmm. and uh, my hobbies. <laughs> I like to read, I like to watch movies, uh, I like to travel. I have a lot of hobbies. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. You have a lot of hobbies. I wish I had a lot of hobbies too. <laughs> All right. Very nice to meet you, Irina. Am I pronouncing your name correctly? Is it Irina or, yes, or yes. Irina? Uh, it doesn't matter. Okay, both are fine. All right. 
Mm. Okay, and Anna. Hello. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you perfectly. Uh, I am from Ukraine, from Vinica. I work in uh, bookshops. I'm director of bookshops, uh, which called Bookva. I am uh, here in Leo uh, just to get uh, my English well, to make it well. I like, uh, uh, it was my favorite subject in school, and I like to um, study very much. Uh, I also like to read many books, uh, and I have such an opportunity mm -hmm. because of my work, uh, of my job. And uh, I like to watch serials such as uh, my favorite, it's uh, How I Meet Your Mother and uh, Game of uh, the Thrones. Very good. Yeah, Game of Thrones. I also like watching Game of Thrones. I believe it's due, uh, the next season is due very soon, right? Uh, in April. Maybe in April, yeah. Cool, very nice to meet you, Anna. So you're from Vinica? Yes. Nice, yes. I had another student uh, that was from that place. And, okay. uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very nice place, I heard. Yes. Uh, Not it's very, very big. People. Yeah, but it's very, very beautiful, I heard. Yes, it's true. <laughs> Um, okay, very nice to meet you. Thank you. Uh, okay. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. So, um, um, Anna and Irina, is this your very first lesson? Uh, I, uh, a week ago, I joined the lesson, but it was uh, 15 minutes to uh, end in the lesson. And I my uh, I want to tell my English is not very well because I uh, have not such an opportunity to speak with uh, some other people who speak in English uh, also. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, okay. Yeah, your English is quite well. Actually, quite quite, quite good. I don't I don't um, have any difficulty understanding you at all. So uh, that's a good thing. Good. <laughs> okay. Um, so I presume you haven't met any of the other students, um, like Lydia, Stas, Renat, and Pavel. So um, uh, let's hear something from them. Just a brief intro. Lydia. My name is Lydia. I am from Moscow, Russia. I work as a personal assistant uh, in the company for which produce uh, equipment for water. I graduated as a teacher and uh, psychology, but I I I worked as a teacher for four years. Then I changed my field, and my hobby is reading, watching um, watching YouTube video about life, about traveling, about handmade. I like to collect perfumes. That's all. Very nice. Thank you very much, Lydia. Okay, Stas. Uh, my name is Stas. I'm from Moscow. I'm 25. I'm a line manager in an electronic company. I like to read and like I like to see films, and, uh, and I'm a big fan of Game of Thrones. Uh, and I like sports, basketball, Muay Thai. That's all I think. Very good. Welcome uh, back. Nice to see you, Stas. Um, <laughs> you never told us how tall you you are. <laughs> you must be pretty tall if you like a basketball. I'm not tall. You know, uh, there is some circumstances that I don't uh, playing my video cam, that I don't have real photo, so I'd like to be some like, mysterious guy. Oh, you know, I, I never, see. You never know about my tall. <laughs> I'm all fat or no, like this. Maybe I, I will not change my mind, but now I want to be like uh, Mr. X. You know? Mistakes. <laughs> yeah, no problems. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> okay, thank you, Stas. Rinat. Yes. Yeah, okay. tell us Should I uh, briefly introduce myself? My name is Rinat. I am from Kazakhstan. I guess I'm only one here from Kazakhstan. <laughs> but I get used to it, of course. And I am a math teacher and teaching in English my subject because here we have this kind of schools when we 
have to teach all the subjects, almost almost all the subjects in English. And uh, <coughs> while doing my job, I <coughs> was forced at first to learn this language, but now I really started to enjoy to to learn this language. And uh, each evening I'm like snuggling in front of my laptop and uh, have my other on my lessons. And uh, I have been working for a long time with this lingua leo was very useful for me. I think I can remember my accent. It was quite bad at first time. <coughs> and, uh, that's so. I have my family. I am into sport. I like music. I'm a normal person, so I think that. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you very much, Rinat. Yeah, Rinat has been with us for a long time. It's one of my um, students that I've been teaching for a while now. And um, Pavel. <coughs> my name is Pavel. I'm from Yekaterinburg. I have been working as a, as a chef in a very good restaurant for about for maybe nine, maybe eight years. <coughs> and I like I like studying English. I like to do sport, such as go into the gym, practice practicing yoga, something like that. <coughs> so that's it. Lovely. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, yeah, myself. Um, so uh, you, as you can see, my name is Alan. I'm uh, Australian. And I have spent most of my life in Australia. I was raised and educated there. Uh, however, I have uh, traveled uh, to other countries and lived in other countries. Um, I spent five years in Germany, uh, two years in Egypt. Now I'm in the UK. I have been here for about three years. And um, yeah, some of my hobbies are uh, sports. I also you know, I try to keep active when I have the time. Uh, I'm really into football or soccer. And um, yeah, I like uh, languages, uh, history, study of people, uh, religions. And also um, I enjoy uh, technology. I like to keep up to date with, uh, you know, the latest high tech. There you go. Are there any questions from the, our, our new students or any student? What language uh, do you learn? What <laughs> language do you know? What language do I speak? Um, okay, well, I lived in Germany for almost five years, so German. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I also spent two years in Egypt, so I'm kind of a beginner in Arabic. And um, I. Uh, my parents are actually from Croatia and, and Bosnia, so I can speak Bosnian, Croatian, Serbian. It's kind of the same language. Um, yeah, so I can probably understand maybe 30 to 40 percent of what, um, uh, you know, uh, from Russians, that Russians speak. So, uh, don't be modest. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Since it's very, very close, you know, there is a lot of influence um, from the Slavic, you know, language. Can you tell us something in Russian? Sorry? Can you tell us something in Russian? Can I? St I can't really speak it. I said I can understand <laughs> ah. 30 to 40 percent uh, because of the vocabulary is quite similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of the words are quite similar, so this is why I can understand. Uh, but if I also speak it, I'll, I'll make many mistakes. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. And this is this is why I can tell the Cyrillic writing. Um, you know, when your your name is in Russian, I can sometimes uh, read it without uh, much difficulty. Yeah. Are you gonna write a nice long sentence for me, Pavel? Oh, <laughs> I thought you were gonna write something in Russian. <laughs> Okay, any other questions?
No? no. OK. Uh, then let's get started. So uh, for those new students, um, just to brief, briefly tell you what we're doing, uh, this is a um, IELTS preparation uh, series that that I do. It's actually the second series. There are three in total, as you can see here on the right. Um, and each series has <laughs> over 20 episodes, about 26, depending which series it is. So this is now the 14th episode of the second series. And uh, basically what I do is I play a video, which is about 10 minutes long. Um, I don't tell you anything about the video, so I expect you to tell me or to briefly summarize the video for me. So after you have watched the video, I you know, usually ask the students to give me a quick summary of what you have seen or what you have learned from the video. After that, we go through the study notes about the grammar that was covered in this video or you know, whatever else it might. Um, be about. And then towards the end we have some activities and exercises about this. Okay, so um, if I could kindly ask you to mute your microphones at the top of your video, your Hangout video, there is a microphone button. If you can click that and, and mute yourself, that would be good so that there are no um, interruptions during the video. All right, lovely, thank you very much. Okay, so here we go. Hello, I'm Margot Politis. Welcome to Study English, IELTS Preparation. Today we're going to talk about tenses and different ways of making comparisons. Choosing the best tense for formal writing, including your IELTS essay, is important and so is being <coughs> consistent. We're going to start by listening to an ecologist talking about termites in tropical Australia. What verb tense does she use? So this is another species of termite that we have here in the territory. It's and this species is Nasudotermis graviolus. And as you can tell, it nests in trees. And their nests are nice and round around the higher branches of the tree. And then they build these little runways, what we call carton runways, that run all the way from the nest all the way down to the base of the tree. And the idea here is the termites just use them as shelter so they're not exposed to predators and not exposed to the hot sun. So they travel down through these tunnels and that allows them to access food resources on the ground. So here in tropical Australia, termites are actually the major decomposer insect and they also play a really important role in conditioning the soil, much like earthworms do. So they help to turn over the soil to create new soil and to increase the porosity of the soil. She says, termites are the major decomposer insect. They play a really important role. They help to turn over the soil. She uses the simple present tense form of verbs, are, play, and help. In IELTS writing tasks, the essay topics given are general and will require you to write about actions. The simple present tense would be the most appropriate verb form to use because you would be talking about general facts. Dr. Dawes Gromudski was describing general facts about termites so she used the simple present. Listen again. So here in tropical Australia, termites are actually the major decomposer insect. And they also play a really important role in conditioning the soil, much like earthworms do. So they help to turn over the soil. She starts using the present tense and then continues with it throughout her description. It's very important to be consistent in the verb tense you use. So when writing your IELTS essay, try to use the simple present tense for the main verb and avoid switching tenses. Keeping in mind that the essay will be about things in general, you also need to consider the language of the noun phrases. 
Here's Tracy talking about the nesting habits of termites. What noun forms does she use? The idea here is the termites just use them as shelter, so they're not exposed to predators and not exposed to the hot sun. So they travel down through these tunnels and that allows them to access food resources on the ground. Most of the noun phrases she uses are plural. Termites, predators, tunnels and food resources. She uses the plural for termites because she is talking about the species as a whole. The idea here is about the habits of termites in general, so the plural would be used. It is not only one predator or a single tunnel or one food resource that's being discussed, but all the predators, tunnels and food resources of the termites. In formal writing, you will usually find nouns are in plural form when the statements are general ones about groups, classes or things. But of course you'll need to watch for uncountable nouns because uncountable nouns do not have a plural form. The various topics you may get in the IELTS test will be general in nature and will require you to discuss, explain, compare and contrast in general terms. So for your IELTS essay, you should use the simple present tense as the main verb form and use plural nouns or uncountable nouns for your subjects. Now let's look at another aspect of the termite story, how comparisons are structured in English. We use a comparative to compare one person, thing or action with another. For example, Judy is younger than her sister. We can use a double comparative when we want to say something is changing. For example, they are getting better and better since starting the IELTS program. There is another way we can use a comparative to describe complementary processes. That is, we can describe how something is changing but changing together with something else. We can use this kind of form. In Australia, the farther south you go, the cooler the winters. Now watch Tracy talk about the rate at which termites break down mulch. The more termites and the more other bugs you have in the soil, the quicker this mulch is going to decompose and that means the faster the nutrients are going to cycle through the system and help make it healthier. She says, the more termites and the more other bugs you have, the quicker this mulch is going to decompose and the faster the nutrients are going to cycle. She is comparing several things that are changing together. Let's see how the basic structure of a comparative expression like this works. The form is the positive plus the subject plus the verb. Tracy said, the quicker this mulch is going to decompose. Then using exactly the same grammatical structure, she added the complementary statement. The faster the nutrients are going to cycle. Notice the symmetry of these statements. It makes it easier to remember and apply. Let's try another example. The older she gets, the happier she is. The older she gets, the happier she is. And another one. The harder I study, the more I learn. The harder I study, the more I learn. As with most languages, English users take shortcuts. For example, if someone asked me how I take my tea, I might say, the stronger, the better. 
the stronger my T is, the better it will be. When the subject is understood in this context, you only need to state the comparison, leaving out the subject and verb. How would you like your haircut? The longer, the better. This is short for, the longer my hair is, the better it will be. The short form is common with phrases ending in the better. When is your friend coming over? The sooner, the better. Do you like hot soup? The hotter, the better. It's also used to describe a good party, one that has lots of people. You might say, the more, the merrier. It's understood that you mean, the more people there are, the merrier the party will be. These phrases are examples of more complex comparative structures. Why not practice them with your friends? The sooner, the better. That's all for today. Let's review what we've learnt. We've talked about the IELTS essay task and using the simple present tense and plural nouns. Then we talked about making different kinds of comparisons, ones that described complementary processes. And don't forget that you can watch the story again and get more IELTS help when you visit our Study English website. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Okay, everyone. <clears throat> so that was the video. Now I'd like you to give me a, a summary of your own about what you've learned. I hope you guys were taking notes because <laughs> I know it's quite a lot to take in at once, what she was saying. So um, maybe we'll give the new students a chance, Anna or Irina. Who would like to start? Just giving us a brief summary, take about a minute. To, to tell about this video about a minute, what I have uh, understood. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just what have you understood from watching this video? What was it about? Uh, this video was about the termites which uh, lives in Australia, but uh, it the video helped us to understand how to build. Uh, uh, present tense uh, in English, how to build uh, the words uh, and to combine it together mm -hmm. Gram uh, in uh, grammatical. It's, uh, uh, I think All that right, well uh, I think that this video is about uh, uh, present simple uh, essay uh, and before and uh, also about uh, uh, the methods of uh, comparison. Mm -hmm. They show us uh, two uh, <coughs> variety of how we can do it. Uh, also they uh, in this video told us about uh, uh, how we should write, uh, write uh, IELTS so it should be in plural and in present simple. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Yeah, that, that's nice and uh, briefly summarized. Thank you. Lydia, how would you summarize this video? <clears throat> I think this uh, video uh, <coughs> gives us um, some tips for uh, ELT essay. How to write it more better? IELTS and essay, yeah. IELTS essay, yes. Um, uh, and he, uh, no. she advised us to use simple present uh, in, in our essay, and uh, also escape switching tenses. I mean, more complicated tenses. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, she's uh, said about using plural noun if we speak about a group and also uncountable noun and what else she said about uh, comparative um, um, that uh, exists uh, some way to compare um, for comp 
compa comparing for com to compare. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, double com comparison, the, be the harder, the, um, the better, or maybe the uh, longer, the um, better also. It's very common um, com comparison uh, when uh, we use the better in the end. Good. And um, what else? It's, I think that's all. that's all. Okay, very good. Thank you, Lydia. Okay, Stas, how would you summarize this video? Uh, the girls just already said everything. They just stole my thoughts. I, I, I have no words for this. Unfortunately. <laughs> I, I can I can tell anything. This video helps us to to write uh, a set task on IELTS uh, in IELTS, and we we saw beautiful girl from Australia who told us about uh, what interesting things about termite, termites and uh, the. Uh, the guide, the teacher, <laughs> trying to un trying to un uh, explain uh, all forms which the Australian girl used. <laughs> very good video. In conclusion. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much, Stas. Oh, Rinat, how would you summarize this video in your own words? <clears throat> okay. In this very video lesson, we found out and enrich our knowledge basically in two directions, I would say. The teacher, by using video about termites, explained us the importance of a proper and the right using of tenses when it comes to IELTS uh, task, uh, to be exactly uh, in IELTS writing task. And we need to uh, describe actions. So in this case, simple present tense is more appropriate. So we have to try to use this one when we like describing gen more general things. And uh, the second part was about the um, <coughs> uh, comparative nouns, I think, comparative to compare. So to make this comparative, it explains the structure. Of course, we have to use these comparative words and subjects and verbs. And she gave us uh, quite a bunch of examples. For example, the quicker this mulch is going to decompose. Uh, uh, and again, we have to repeat this uh, structure twice. So she is a Oh, there were many, many examples I can uh, repeat it later on. And uh, we can also use these comparative things like in short form. Uh, when we, when it is clear, understandable, the subject and the verb, we just can uh, uh, leave out. Uh, we just can leave out the subject and the verb and uh, take uh, Leave only comparative. For example, the longer the better. And uh, mostly, commonly, we use this short form when it comes to use with like with the comparison better. For example, the sooner the better. Mm -hmm. That's all I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. That's a great summary, Rinat. <coughs> Yeah, Rinat has been doing this for uh, some time, so he's very experienced at this. And, um, uh, you know, some students might think that, okay, everyone has mentioned what the video is about. But th the point of this exercise, what we're doing now, retelling or summarizing the, the video that we've all seen, is actually for your own good, for you to practice using your own uh, you know, language skills. Yeah, so sentence structure and so on and so forth. Okay, um, thank you very much. Pavel? Yes. Uh, the video was about tenses, 
comparison and noun phrases. So, about simple present tense. Uh, she mentioned that it was very useful to use it in IELTS writing exam to, to talk about general facts. And uh, she mentioned that it's very, it's very <coughs> important to be consistent in using tenses and avoid switching tenses. And uh, simple present is the main verb form to use during IELTS exam. Uh, after that, she, she told us about noun phrases. I have one example, termites, and uh, <coughs> uh, the researcher used it for general, um, I don't know, populations, for describing groups. Uh, she talked about all of the terms. And uh, it's very important to know that uncountable nouns do not have plural form. Uh, what about comparison? The formula of comparison is the plus plus comparative plus subject plus verb. And uh, for example, the faster the nutrients are going to cycle. And after that, she explained us about two things that change in simultaneously. For example, in Australia, the, far, the further south you go, the cooler winters become. Mm. The older she gets, the happier she is. The harder I study, the more I learn. This, and about short and form, I think Renat explained it very well. The stronger, the better, the more the merrier, something like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, very well done, I have to say, Pavel. Well done. That's a great summary as well. Uh, it's uh, obvious that you have also done this a few times. That's a good thing. Okay, thank you um, to all the students. So now, uh, what we'll do is go straight into the um, study notes PDF. So we will briefly have a, uh, uh, you know, have a read through this. I'll actually give you the link for this so you can download it yourself. Uh, okay. Can you make it a little bit bigger because... Yes, absolutely. ...sorting our eyes. Yeah, no problems. Okay, so you have this same link uh, in the chat. You can click on it and download it if you like. But I prefer if you can, um, you know, watch the one that I'm uh, screen sharing. Um, so there are six pages here in total, so I don't think we'll be able to go through all of the six pages, but we'll cover some of the th parts in this. So it's about termites, yeah? This was the interesting topic, uh, actually, and then some of the grammar discussed in the video is mentioned here. Um, like you all said, about the formal writing, yeah, when it comes to the IELTS writing task. So here's a tip, or some tips for us. Remember, <clears throat> there are particular language features which characterize the different question types assessed in the academic IELTS writing module. So be aware of which verb tense, voice, or modal verb is the most appropriate for each text type, and which transition signal allows you to best express your ideas. Um, yeah, so this is something which, you know, you have to really understand. Okay, so let's have a look. <clears throat> Language structures. Okay, this is all pretty straightforward. So focusing on the skill of, uh, of using appropriate language structures. Specifically, we can identify the main features which characterize the different question types examined in the IELTS writing test. So here we have... <clears throat> Uh, writing task one types. So there are several text or question types which are used to assess your writing ability. These include 
describing and interpreting line graphs, tables, bar charts, and other graph, uh, graphic information, describing the stage of a process or procedure, describing and explaining how something works, and describing a cycle. So um, some of you have already done the IELTS exam. I presume the academic one, so you probably are aware of these things. I think, uh, Rinat, you've done this. And um, Pavel, have you done it as well? No, Did I've you? done only five. I see. Mm -hmm. OK. Lydia, have you done the IELTS exam? Can you repeat? Have you done the IELTS exam? No. No. You have it, okay. All right, <clears throat> so then uh, using the appropriate language structures, um, we mentioned that in the tip, so you need to understand, um, you know, what language structure to use, uh, which one is the most appropriate. Okay, so let's have a look at some of these language structures in more detail. Um, so here we have on the left side, the text type, and on the right, describing and interpreting graphic information. So language structures, subjects, we have a variety of subjects, the line graph, the size of the, so on and so forth, the pie chart, the number of, a majority of, and so on and so forth. Then we have the verbs, verb tenses, simple past, uh, expressions for the future, used to describe definite dates and times which happened in the past. And uh, when talking about future changes, uh, use expressions such as it is predicted or it is projected, it is forecast or it is estimated. This, these are expressions for the future. So um, I don't expect you to remember this now or all at once, but uh, you have the PDF for this, so you can um, look at it and revise it in your spare time. And then we have verbs referring to change or trends, rise, fall, drop, increase, decrease, decline, remain stable. So if you're talking about the economy, for example, yeah, you can use some of these, um, or the change in currency, yeah. Then we have adjectives and adverbs describing the size and speed of change, slight or slightly, sharp, sharply, steep, steeply, slow, slowly, considerably, and so on. Comparing and contrasting a variety of different comparative and construct, uh, contrastive structures. Yeah, drastically is another good one. Well done, Pablo. Mm -hmm. So comparative, bigger, better, smaller, like some of you mentioned. Uh, then we have uh, contrastive structures. However, on the other hand, uh, conversely, although, so how could we use this? Let's see if someone can give us an example with one of these contrasted structures. Rinat, you want to try and give us an example with one of these? Uh, <clears throat> okay. Uh, so, every day having like Having everyday online lesson is good. Uh, however, we don't have to forget about writing skills too. So I'm contrasting that not only yeah. speaking spoken English is important. Yes. Very good. Yes. So your contrast was between, um, you know, studying uh, while, you know, speaking only and writing so you're saying speaking is good you know participating you know online classes is good however we also need to 
practice our writing skills. Very good. Yeah. And we have other ones like whereas, while, unlike, different from, and so on. Okay, so keep going. Um, then we have describing the stages of a proce uh, process or procedure. Um, so verbs, passive voice, uh, present passive for general description. Uh, so simple present passive is or are plus the uh, participle. So is connected, are manufactured, is cut, are dried, is thrown, is shipped, are measured. And the present continuous in passive is being connected, are being dried, is being measured. And then we have the past passive when referring to a specific event in the past. Was harvested, were dried, was manufactured. Okay. And then the continuous were being dried, were, oh, sorry, was being manufactured. So you need to understand these language structures, how to use them properly and to make an impact on the examiner or assessor in your IELTS. Um, day. And um, so many more here. Chronological, uh, chronological order or sequence, uh, as soon as, as long as, after, before, since, until, and so on. Um, in order to, so that, in order that, which results in. Firstly, first of all, First and foremost, these are very useful, and you should use them when writing. You must. Yeah. So when you're explaining a process or procedure, this is what it's all about. Yeah. Um, if there are three things that need to be done, you should start the first paragraph of you know, your body. You know, maybe with firstly, you uh, open the box. You know, then you explain it a little bit, and then you can say, secondly, um, you know, you take out the device or whatever you're doing, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah. So there's still about two or three pages left, uh, which we don't have the time to go through. Uh, but I'd like you to do that in your free time, please. So have a look at these uh, next page. It just basically gives you more details on how to, uh, you know, help you and assist you in the writing task. Yeah, actually, it gives you an example of the types and um, presenting an argument. Also very very useful. Um, transition signals. Yeah, like uh, in my view or in my opinion, this is the wrong thing to do, for example. Or I believe that or I feel that this is absolutely um, incorrect or, you know, whatever you want to express uh, and so on and so forth. Yeah, and some more transition signals, yeah. Okay, guys, so you have this now. You can save it to your computer. And now I will show you the activities. By the way, were there any questions? I know that was a lot to cover. Yeah, it, it can be concluded. I see Pavel has been writing some useful information there for us. Yeah. Does anyone have a question? No, I don't know. Yeah, don't, be, don't be afraid. I know. It's a lot to take in. You can ask me at any time or even write it in the chat if you like. Okay, so let's have a look at these activities. There are only two. So let's practice a little bit. Here, um, I want you to identify the function of the highlighted transition signal in the sentences. Okay, so question one. whereas is highlighted. So what do you think that is? A, B, or C? Pavel, let's start with you. Yes. <clears throat> it's contrasting. 
-hmm. Nowadays, more people own their own home, whereas in the past, people generally rented. It's obvious, it's contrasting between nowadays and in the past. Excellent, very good. Now, this one is pretty obvious. You can see that there's a contrast between today, nowadays, what's happening nowadays, and the past. Very good. Okay, second one. Um, Anna, could you try and do the second one, please? Oh, I don't... Uh... I don't know what is this. It is um, difficult to me to um, understand this uh, lesson. Okay, no problem. Can you read the sentence for me, please? Uh, yes. Okay. Motor vehicle um, accidents are often caused by slippery road conditions. It tell about slippery road condition, but mm -hmm. I don't understand the first part of uh, this sentence. Mortal vehicle accidents. I don't know what does it mean. Uh, motor vehicle accidents. Motor vehicle means cars, like cars, anything mm -hmm. to do with cars, trucks, you know, vans, buses. Uh, okay, I understand. Yeah, an accident. You know, when two cars Ac have a crash, it's an accident. Okay. Ah, uh, I understand. Uh, it happens because the roads are sleepy. So mm -hmm. it's uh, explaining, I think. B? Uh, so you think that it, they're explaining us uh, the process? Mm. It's wrong. You, yes? Yeah. Explaining is not exactly correct, yeah? So... So, motor vehicle accidents are often caused by slippery road conditions. Uh, C, cause, effect. Yes. Case, effect. Cause and effect. Why? Because... Because... Uh, because um, the... Um, yeah. So how cause to say it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Crash, uh, yes? It's yeah, that's right. it. So because crash is uh, happens uh, because of the road uh, of slippery road. Exactly. So why are there motor vehicle accidents? Because the road is slippery. Yes. Now I understand. Yeah. You see, cause and effect. Usually, it's quite simple. You know, it's not that difficult. Um, you know, don't need to be scared about. Oh, I don't understand a few words. And as long as you can kind of see this caused, usually it kind of makes sense, anyways. Yeah. Okay, that was well done. Thank you, Anna. Okay, Rinat, next one. It could be argued that the advantages of wearing seat belts far outweigh the disadvantages. And uh, in my opinion, it is A, expressing an opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. That's correct. Yeah, so it could be argued. It could be argued, someone expressing an opinion. Yes. Yeah. It's not comparing, because there's nothing else to compare it with. Yeah. And generalizing, it's not really a general statement. It's yeah, an opinion. One option. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Very good. Thanks, Renat. Next one, Stas. Um, the statistics for this quarter are strong compared with the last quarter. I think it's comparing. It's obvious. Yeah, very good. This one is straightforward as well. Compared with statistics for this quarter and the last quarter. So we we're comparing two things, two different times. Very good, comparing. OK, five, Lydia. The company, uh, the company has performed well not only in the home country but also throughout Southeast Asia. Hmm. It's difficult. <laughs> I understand this meaning of uh, um, sentence, but I can choose properly adding mm. mm, images. Mm -hmm. No. Interesting. Okay. So, do you think it's C introducing an opposite idea? No, it's not the No, good. So it's definitely not C. No. So it's either A or B. 
No, is maybe B. Generalizing. Is it generalizing? But, but no, adding. It's uh, um, one uh, thought and then added, it was added second thoughts. It's maybe adding uh, similar ideas. Yes. What's the key word here? Also. Mm -hmm. The yeah. company has performed well, not only in the home country, but also throughout Southeast mm -hmm. Asia. Adding, adding. Yeah, so it's adding similar ideas. Very good. Okay, um, Irina, you can do the last one, and then I'll let you guys go. Number six. Mm -hmm. I can't see. Uh, the most significant feature is the feedback uh, mechanism on the laser. So, the most significant feature emphasizing a point. Yes. Did you did you guess that or did you? Uh, I think that uh, mm -hmm. I don't understand the first one. Be precise. Mm -hmm. What uh, does it mean? Uh, this it isn't uh, the third one. It isn't adding similar ideas. Good. But what does it mean? Being precise. I don't know. Okay, who knows what being precise means? Does anyone know? Yes. It's, yes, Pavel? It's about to give <coughs> an exactly facts or exactly yes. numbers, something like this. Yeah. Very good. So to be precise means to be exact, accurate, spot on, or correct. Okay, Irina? So it's emphasizing a point. Very good. Yeah, it makes sense now. The most significant feature is the feedback mechanism on the laser. So you're emphasizing a point. Yeah, uh, the most significant. Yeah, okay, very good. Uh, so we have run out of time. Uh, there are still uh, another four questions to this activity. And then there is a second activity uh, which requires you to choose the most appropriate comparative adjective from the box below. Okay, so you can do this as homework or as, you know, in your private time, in your spare time. Uh, I will give you the link for this. Okay. There you have it. So you can click on the link and save it to your computer and um, you know see if you can do this. Um, by yourself. And on the last page here actually you have the, the answers so you can compare to see if you were correct. Okay, any questions? No, thank you. All good? <coughs> no problems. You're most thank welcome. You thank you. Okay, you're most mm -hmm. welcome. All the best. Nice to meet you Anna and Irina and uh, mm -hmm. hope to see you guys soon. Bye. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the lesson. Thank you. You're most Bye. welcome. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.